Hello students, you're welcome to the class. So today we are going to talk about refraction of light waves. So by the end of the lesson, you are expected to know the following. What is refraction? Laws of refraction, total internal reflection, conditions for total internal reflection, and total refraction in nature and many more. So refraction is the bending of a light as it crosses from as it crosses the boundary between the media of different densities thus causing a change in its direction the phenomenon of refraction is responsible for the following common observation one the bottom of a river or pond appears shallower than it really is two a rod or spoon appears bent or broken when it is partially immersed in water or any liquid the angle of incidence is known as the angle which the incident rays make with the normal to the surface. The incident ray is refracted as it enters the second medium and it travels along the path which is known as the refracted ray. Why the angle of refraction is the angle that is between the refracted ray and the normal. Observation shows that when a light travels from a medium A to B, the refracted rays bend towards the normal and angle of refraction is therefore less than the angle of incidence. Conversely, if light travels from a denser to a less dense medium, the refracted rays bend away from the normal and the angle of refraction is more than the angle of incidence. When we talk about laws of refraction, there are two laws of refraction. The number one law states that the incident ray, the refracted ray, and the normal at the point of incidence all lies on the same plane. Two, it states that the ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence to the angle of refraction is constant for a given pair of media. This second law is also referred to as Snell's law which is equal to sine i all over sine r, which is equal to n, where we have the n to be equal to the refractive index of the second median with respect to the first median. Refractive index is also known as the number, which gives a measure of refraction or bending of light as it travels from one median to another. If light is traveling from air to glass, the refractive index of glass is given by sine of angles of incidence in air all over sine of angle of incidence in the glass also if the light is traveling from glass to air the refractive index is giving us sine of angle of incidence in glass all over sine of angle of incidence in air so from the principle of reversibility of light we have that when light is traveling from air to glass the refractive index is equal to 1 all over what? Refractive index when light is traveling from glass to air. Since refraction is due to the change in the speed of light as it travels from one medium to another, the refractive index is given as speed of light in air or vacuum all over speed of light in glass. Then we we'll move over to what is known as real and apparent depth. The depth of a river or a swimming pool always appears shallower than it actually is. When a glass block, when a glass block is placed on top of an object, example a pin or a mark on a paper, the object when viewed from directly above appears nearer the top. The apparent depth is caused by refraction. Theory shows that the real depth, apparent depth, and the refractive index are related by refractive index, which is equal to real depth all over apparent depth. So here we have question number one, which states, what is the real depth of a swimming pool, which appears to be 10 meter deep when viewed directly from above its surface? given the refractive index to be equal to 4 over 3. So we have the solution from our formula which is equal to refractive index n 
is equals to root depth all over apparent depth and here we are given the apparent depth to be equals to 10 meter why the root depth is unknown and we're asked to find it so all we need to do is to substitute the given information into the formula so when we do that we'll be having 4 over 3 equals to real depth which is unknown all over 10 so we solve for the real depth and we have the final answer to be equals to 13.3 meter so we move over to what is known as the total internal reflection first of all what is critical angle this is the angle of incidence in the denser medium when the angle of refraction in the less dense medium is 90 degree hence total internal reflection is the reflection of an instant ray of light at the interface between the medium of incidence and another medium of lower refractive index when the angle of incidence in the denser medium is see the critical angle there are conditions for total internal reflection one is that the light must be traveling from an optically more dense to an optically less dense medium two the angle of incidence in the denser medium must be greater than the critical angle from Snell's law we have sine i all over sine r which is equal to sine c all over sine 90 is equal to refractive index when light passed from air to glass which is equal to 1 over refractive index when light passed from glass to air which is equal to 1 over n where n here is refractive index of glass by definition since n is equal to 1.5 so sine c is equal to 1 over 1.5 which is equal to 0 0.667 hence refractive index n is given as 1 over sine c so here is question number two it says what is the critical angle for light traveling from water to air given that the refractive index of water is 3 over 4 so solution we have the formula which state that n refractive index is equal to 1 over sine c so we have to substitute the given information which is refractive index 3 over 4 and we have to solve for the critical angle for the light traveling from water to air so when we substitute the value and we simplify so we're having the sine c to be equals to 0 0.75 that is when we divide 3 by 4 hence for us to find the c we have to find the sine inverse so if you're using your calculator you press the shift button then shift then sign then 0 0.75 it will give you this particular value here so sine inverse of 0 0.75 is equal to 48.6 degree don't forget you are looking for angle so it's going to be in degree so we'll move over to total reflection in nature total reflection in nature we have one mirage a mirage is a natural effect due to the total internal reflection occurring at the boundary of a hot and cooler air. These pools of water disappear as we approach them because they are mere optical illusion. 2. Field of view of a fish underwater. A fish underwater or a swimmer moving on his back underwater can have a full view of everything above the water surface even the sun in the horizon as long as the water surface is not ruffled practice question please attend to the questions below and if you have any question please don't forget to drop it at the comment section below god bless you and do have a nice day